All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today is one of the most important lessons I could ever teach you because it's about building your credit. Now, if you do not believe me about how important credit is, you need to pause this video and ask somebody in your household or even an adult nearby how important credit is. Okay. This is one of those videos I'm going to tell you, you need to listen to this lecture. You need to really focus because what you're going to learn about today, it's going to come up on you, creep up on you in like another year or two, guaranteed. Especially if you're trying to like move out, uh, have your own life, do the certain things, you know, and you're going to want to get a car, want to get an apartment, you know, get some furniture, things like that. Um, they're going to be like, yeah, your credit score is horrible, you know, or you have no credit score, like that's sufficient. So you're, you're going to pay more. You're going to do this and that. Um, because again, like I said, this is incredibly important. And a lot of times those adults I told you to talk to your parents or any other, other one around, um, they had to learn the hard way. Like I did, you know, so you are, you need to take advantage and listen to this whole lecture video. Okay. You really do. If there's any lesson you should save, uh, on one of your, like, you know, if you were have the YouTube, you know, account, you need to save this video because again, this will help you out in the future. Okay. So here's your warm up picture. So, Obviously, somebody's in the hole because you can see the dirt coming out, right? So my question is this. What do you think this artist is trying to say about people, debt, as you see in the hole, there's right there in the black, it says debt, and interest. What do you think this artist is trying to say? Now, I had to kind of point this out to some students. Um, which way is the dirt going? Is the door dirt going into the debt or coming out? And a lot of students are like, it's going out. So exactly. Does that mean they're getting out of debt or they're getting deeper into debt? So that little hint, that little clue should help you to um, analyze this picture. Okay. All right. So think about it. Pause the video. Write your response because we're moving on in three two, one. So what is credit? Well, if you basically boil it down, uh, credit is a contractual agreement where people borrow money and agree to repay the lender with interest. Okay. Interest means a little bit more money than what you borrowed. Okay? It's a little extra. Uh, it's a promise between you and your lender. Like, Hey, you give me this money, I'll pay it back to you and a little extra. How much is that little extra? It depends on you, mainly how much you're paying back, whether you're paying a little bit or a lot, you know, uh, for those like repayments, it, it, it could change everything. Okay. You will build the line of credit when you do this. Because the more you pay back and on time, the more you'll be allowed to borrow money. They'll go from like, hey, you can only borrow 500. And if you keep doing this, paying back on time, so that you'll be allowed to borrow more, more, and more, and more. Do you have to hit that max? We'll get to that later, but no. Okay. Now, here is a big, big thing I've heard from my former students was, Oh, I don't understand why my credit, you know, isn't the credit score isn't that great. You know, I'm paying for my stuff. I'm paying for everything I, I uh, buy and stuff like that. I'm like, okay. Um, so you're sending off, you're sending these, uh, the payments, you're paying them online or how are you, how are you doing this? No, I just use my card. So wait, you're using your card to pay your payment? Yeah. Do you have to put a pin number in? Yeah, that's my debit card. A debit card is not the same as a credit card, guys. It's not. 
A debit card takes money directly from your checking account, sends it to the company wherever you're buying your stuff from or a restaurant or whatever. Okay. It's not the same as a credit card. Okay. Um, now, here's the thing. At some banks, you can get a dual card. Basically, it's a debit card and a credit card, you know. And but some banks just say no. You here's a debit card, and then here's a separate card for a credit card. Okay. Um, but only by using a credit card is like really a only way to build credit. And then again, if you actually pay back the money that you borrowed. Okay. Now. I have one of those cards that's also a debit and a credit. So how do you know if, you know, the registered person is doing credit or debit? Because they'll ask you, you know, hey, you need to put your uh, PIN number, your number. That means they're, they put on their register thing, debit. But if they, you know, you put your card in, they're pressing the little thing, and also the receipt comes out, they want you to sign a little something. That means they used it on credit, okay? And you'll have to pay that back, okay? Now, one of the things I've always heard from students was, well, what do I get if I get good credit? Well, one of the best things you get is low interest rates on credit cards and loans, okay? Like, I bought a Jeep um, like four years ago, three years ago, and... I didn't like the rate that they were giving me, which was like at 4.2%, something like that. And I knew I had a really, really good credit score, like almost perfect. And I told them, no, I'm good. I'm walking away. So they came to me like, oh, let's come, come back. We'll see if we can make a better deal. And then they came back and said, okay, we can give you 1.6%. I knew that's like the best I could get. So I said, okay, I'll accept it. So just to give you an idea, the amount of money I have to pay every month for my Jeep, that Jeep payment, it's only $160. And I'm sure you know some people who have some brink and dink little car and their half their car payment is like $400, $500, $600. See, that's because they their interest rate was really high. You know, probably because again, their credit score wasn't that good. But if you have a really good credit score, that percentage could be really low and you can, you know, you don't have to pay that much. Okay. Um, you have a better chance of getting credit cards and loan approvals. So like when my apartment right here where I'm at, um, I got approved like that. When my ex and I tried to get it together, they said no because her credit score was really bad, even though mine was really good. Um, it because of her it was really bad. It brought it to make it even. It really brought us down to this level. So I had to get it by myself under my name. That's why when we broke up, I had the apartment because it's under my name, not hers. Okay. Um, same thing with credit cards. I've gotten offers from like Disneyland, like, oh, if you get this credit card, um, you can get exclusives and be invited to certain events that only certain people can go to. Thing is, I'm not a big fan of Disneyland. I'm not going to drive no three hours or some of that. So like that credit card means nothing to me, you know. So that's the thing they try to do, entice you with offers and better credit cards and things like that. You get certain things. And like I said, in commercials, you see all the time, you get 1% back, money back from what you use. Blah, blah, blah. But if you have a really good credit score, you get not just 1%, you might get like 5%, you know, 8%, 10%. I don't, I, I don't know like how far, how high it can go. But I know it's, you can get a lot more than 1%, you know, 5%. Eight, somewhere on there. Sure, absolutely. The other thing is you have negotiating power. Like I said, when I walked out that first time about the Jeep, they came after me running. Same thing with you're buying a house. They're like, oh, well, you know, we can then give you this loan, this and that, at a high percentage rate. You'd be like, no, we're, um, I'm good. I'll go somewhere else. You know, they don't want you because they want to sell that house. So, 
they'll work with you. Okay. You also get a higher limit on credit. You meaning you can borrow more. You know, you can take out a personal loan and you can you know, really get into like the tens of tens of thousands, twenty thousand, you know, uh, that you could just borrow. Now should you? Probably not, but it's nice to have that offer. Um, and like I said earlier, it's easier to get approvals for rental houses, apartments, stuff like that. It's so much easier. You know, car insurance rates. Again, that, that happens too. Your car insurance rate could be really low. You know, if you have great credit score. Um, the last one is the void security deposits for utilities. So if you get a new apartment, new house, and you have to, you know, they have to turn on your gas, electric, things like that. You have to put a deposit down. But sometimes if your credit score is really good, like really, really good, your deposit may be nothing. And if it is something, it'll probably be really small because they know, hey, this person is going to pay their bills. This person's, you know, good for, good for it. We know we're going to get our money back. So how can you, as a student, as a young person, start off building your credit? One of the easiest ways is to buy small things with your credit card. Get your mama a $1,200 chain. You know, hey, it's Mother's Day. She took care of you, things like that. Get her that nice little necklace, whatever. Pay it off immediately. Now, when I say immediately, I don't mean like one payment, okay? You you want to build credit, okay? But two, three, four, five payments maybe. Somewhere between there, okay? Whatever you can, whatever areas like that. But don't stretch it out to like 10 payments, 20 payments. That's not going to help you. So the other thing I would really suggest is if you're going to buy something like, again, like I said, like example, that $1,200 necklace or whatever, uh, make sure you have at least half the money with you to pay for it. So like, let me make sure you have at least $600. That way, when you make a payment, it's like you put 200 down, 200 down and then next week put another 200 down and they'll say you get paid. Now you have more money. Now you can put that other 200 and so on and so forth till you pay it off. So that not only you know, you're financially set, but also you get paid, you have some money and you had that money that you have the money was already used to pay off that uh, the necklace. So that just helps you build credit. One of the things you should not do is um, make the main minimum payments on your card okay i know it's very enticing because they they put on there on the paper saying you only have to pay like 48 dollars yeah 48 dollars but for how long that's the thing that they don't tell you and it's going to be for a long time so you're end up going to be you're if you keep doing that minimum payment minimum payment all the way through by the time you finish paying that off it's going to be a long time and on top of that you're going to be end up paying a lot more than what you borrowed. You know, so yeah, never do the minimum payment. Now, here's the thing, though. With that being said, I know life happens. You know, people lose their jobs. You know, accidents happen. You know, things happen to where you're, you're kind of in a financial crunch. So, yeah, there I would say, OK, make the minimum payment. But you should not make it a habit and you should never be like, oh, well, you know, I, I just need another uh 50 bucks to buy these shoes you know I'll, I'll take that from my payment towards this paying off this credit card bill thing you know I'll make the minimum payment because once you start doing that you're going to keep finding excuses why you should uh look for that minimum payment why you should do that and it becomes a habit okay one of the last things i would say to you guys when you're starting off is do not max out your credit card yeah you get a credit card like they'll tell you you can get like 500 your limits five hundred dollars a thousand dollars whatever it may be and people tend to think of that like oh i have fifteen hundred dollars i can spend money on because i could put on the credit card you know and when you max it out you know what a lot of people do once they max out the credit card they get another one and now in their mind oh i can still borrow another thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars whatever it may be but they forget to, you know, that, hey, 
on that first credit card, you still got to pay back all that that you maxed out on it. And now you got a new credit card that you're going to put more debt onto. And it's, you're just digging yourself deeper into a hole like that warm up picture was. Okay. Now, how to build your credit at any time. Number one thing is pay your bills on time. Okay. Um, when they're due on the, say the 15th of the, every month, pay it on the 15th. Now, some places will give you a grace period. They'll say, oh, like 10 days. The reason they're doing this is because they want to see what kind of person are you. Do you still pay it on the 15th? Now, I get it. Hey, sometimes on the 15th, the payment's due. You don't get paid till the 17th, you know. So then, okay, yeah, sure. You don't have the money. You won't have money till you uh, get paid. Sure, then wait till you get paid, but pay it off on that day, you know. And then these credit companies, they look at that stuff. They look at like, okay, the 15th was on a Wednesday. They didn't pay it until Friday. Why? Well, hey, they'll, they'll see. It. There's a pattern. On every Friday, they make a payment. That must mean for every two weeks, they make that payment on that Friday. Meaning, hey, they get paid that day. So that shows responsibility. That, hey, as soon as you get money, you're making a payment on it. You know, you're not lingering. You're like, oh, well, I'll pay it, you know. Five days from now, I got time to spare. No. The other thing is make frequent payments. Just because you make, they're saying you only have to pay one time for a month, doesn't mean you have to pay it just one time. You can pay and put another payment in within that month. You know, and it does two things when you do that. One, it makes your debt lower because now you're paying off to the principal of your debt, meaning what you what you borrowed. And also, it shows responsibility on your part to where the credit companies are like, hey, this guy, instead of, you know, he got some extra money somewhere, somehow, but instead of buying you shoes and or eating out somewhere or taking their girlfriend out somewhere, no, they're taking care of their, their debt, you know, to us. So that looks good on you. And then that helps to raise your credit score. Okay. Um, dispute credit errors. This is pretty important too. You can check on things like credit karma and stuff like that to see what, you know, if there's any errors. And if there is, you can point them out like, Hey, no, I wasn't late on this payment. I made it. Here's proof, you know, and uh, you could show like a bank statement, you know, that, Hey, I made this payment at this time. You know, it was on time. This company probably didn't you know, cash it in until later. That's that's their thing. But I paid it off on time. Um, and again, that shows, hey, that you are keeping track of this stuff and they can't pull wool over your eyes because you're you're on top of it. Okay. The last thing I would suggest is do not, you know, do not get a credit card from someplace that's not reliable. Get a secured credit card. Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, something like that. Don't get Joe Schmo's muffler shop credit card. Okay. Because a lot of those places that have like a credit, you know, in the in their own place, like you can't use that credit card anywhere else, but except their place. A lot of times in the fine writing, it'll say stuff like, hey, if you miss a payment, you know, by like a day or two, uh, they can ask for the entire. Uh, payment right there and then so if you owe like three thousand dollars left on your payment for whatever you know for that company and uh, you missed it by two days they can then say well we want all three thousand now and they could take you to court and they will win because in order to get that credit card you had to sign off on that little paper meaning you read all that stuff and you will not win in court because again your signature is right there saying you read all that stuff and you were aware of those rules so and you signed off on it now when it comes to credit there's the three c's okay uh and i know on the chart students have brought it up there's more than three yes i know but these are the big ones uh capacity collateral and character capacity is your ability to pay back the loan so if let's say you make sixty thousand dollars a year um you should not be getting a credit card where your limit is like a hundred thousand dollars because 
that's living above your means. Now, they might try to trap you like that. They're like, oh, yeah, you can take this credit card. You know, the limit's $100,000. Because they know hey, if you do that, live above your means, that you're going to spend a large part of your life paying them back for that big loan. Especially if you max it out or get close to maxing it out. Because, again, you only make 60000 And they know for sure we're going to get this guy to keep paying, 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 paying. And we're going to make a lot of money. But if you know, hey, I only make 60000 Why have this uh, limit that high? You know, no. You show responsibility. You know, like, hey, self-control, things like that. It looks good on you. The other thing is collateral which is assets. Now, the thing is, um, when it comes to assets, it's what's value to the market, not what it's value to you or how much you bought it for. Okay. So when they say, um, like I've had people in the past say, well, you know, my car is worth so much because I did this, I did that. I put this into it. Okay. But then you did, you, that's all the good things you put in there. What about all the bad things? Like, how many times has it broken down? How many times has it been in a wreck? Things like that. Okay. Um, same thing with like valuables, like gold and silver. Because I've had students in the past say, my uncle told me to invest in gold and silver and things like that. Okay, sure. That's, that's good. But it's also bad at the same time. Because you may have bought a thing of gold. Let's say a gold bar for $1,000, right? That's how much you paid for it long ago when you bought it. Okay, doesn't mean that it's worth a thousand dollars right now because the market value is what they're looking at at this point was your assets. So it may not be worth a thousand dollars. It might be worth seven hundred fifty dollars right now. It might be worth more. Who knows? It's just that's what the asset part is. They look at the value at the market value at that point, not when you bought it, but now. Okay, and sentimental things like. Oh, I love this this thing right here. Oh, my grandma gave me this. That's good. But it's only worth like a dollar. They don't care about your your sentiment and your emotions to it. How much is it going to sell in the market? That's the value of your assets. Okay. The last one again is character. This is your reputation and your reliability and trustworthiness as a borrower. When you borrow money, how often do you pay back it, pay back the money on time? You know, do you do the minimum payment? Do you do like fifty dollars more, hundred dollars more? Um, do you, you know, again, uh, pay back multiple times? You know, are you on time, or do you take, you know, like those the whole grace period time, those ten days and things like that? They look at that kind of stuff, and again, that judges how much your can borrow and your credit score. The last part of this is who are these credit companies that judge us and things like that? Well, the first one is like Experian and then there's Equifax and TransUnion, uh, Innovis. These are the big ones. And I had to put this at the very end because some students some years ago said, oh, well, they're all controlled by the government. Guys, no. They are not controlled by the government. The government does not control them. Um, in fact, the government has a credit line with these companies. Not just our government, but governments around the world. Because again, governments have a credit score too. So when they don't pay their bills, their credit score goes down. And that's a bad thing if it goes down. All right. Now, uh, like I said in class, and you may have not been there last class, um, you certainly weren't there for this one. But the thing is, uh, there is no question at the end because that question is now the exit ticket in class. And since you're probably watching this at home, you know, and this wasn't on the, you know, uh, Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday class. This is now probably like Friday or you getting like you're at home. I can't give you an exit ticket question because you're no longer in class. Okay. See what I mean? So you have to do some extra work 
to make up for those points. Now, I haven't made it yet. I'll be making them more likely next week. But just remind me, like, hey, Martinez, I need I need to make up those extra points for the exit ticket. And I'll probably give you, like, a um, word search, you know, paper, you know, to make up for this particular exit ticket, you know, part. Um, but that's it. You can only use the word search one time. Anything more than you missed one exit ticket, you're going to have to do an Achieve 3000 or another type of assignment that uh, I'll be giving you. Okay? So, um, you can't make four word searches and say, oh, I did it four times. Here it is. No, I'm only accepting one. I'm telling you this right now. And if you're not watching this video, listening to it, uh, and you tell me, well, I did four of them. How come I'm not getting the points for it? I'm going to play back this video part for you so I can show you. Hey, I said it. You did not listen. You didn't listen to the video, which I told you you should. Okay, so that's your problem. Okay. So with that being said, you guys, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later. Okay.